Hey, I'm Ron Drodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to day 19 of The Art of Keith Jarrett. And today we're going to look at some statements Jarrett's made about developing your individuality. How do you become yourself when you're playing piano, right? It's really interesting, especially in something like jazz where that tends to get glossed over with all these licks and playing everything in 12 keys and studying Charlie Parker and Keith Jarrett and everything. And, uh, and also our natural inclinations to copy other people, right? We want to sound like things that we've heard, right? So where, uh, where does ourselves, where do ourselves sort of uh, get into the mix there? Well, Jarrett basically has said, to summarize, be yourself. And he talks about that. There's one, one quote uh, where he talks about uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, walking out on stage with, I think, Charles Lloyd is when he's with, with that group. And um, he realized that he could just play whatever he wanted and it would sound like himself. Um, and then in another interview, he talks about how he could even play cliches. You know, if you think about it, Jarrett plays a lot of cliches. You know, he'll play the blues scale. <laughs> You know things that that a, 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 you know a beginning jazz musician would play. There's there's a, a recording of Olio where he's playing the blues scale on Olio. You know, rhythm changes and he's going. Yeah, or maybe just the pentatonic without the the flat of fifth. But in any case, he's playing. That's like you know Jamie Abersoll play along practice suggestion number number two, you know, and I think I rejected that when I first heard that, you know, I said, no, no, nobody just plays the, basically the minor pentatonic on a, on a, on a, on a fast up-tempo version of rhythm changes. That's going to sound amateurish. Jarrett does it, right? And it sounds like Keith Jarrett. The interesting thing here is that um, when, 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 when a lot of interviewers or, you know, people, when we hear somebody say something like that, they tend to dismiss it, you know, sometimes, um, you know, uh, oh, oh, oh no, he's not really answering me, or that's not the real answer, or, or, um, uh, and then they, they just sort of, that's not what I meant. I didn't want that answer. Things like that. You hear it in other really greats too. You know, if you want to have some fun, look at Marlon Brando interviews on the internet. There's about three, four, or five of them over the years, spanning decades, and and uh, he he gives some gems about acting that. The interviewers just think he's rambling and they're, they, no, that's not what I meant or no, you're not right. You know, it's interesting. So when you have someone like a Keith Jarrett or a Marlon Brando or if we could interview Mozart, you know, when they say things that sound kind of obvious, maybe they've gone a little farther into them than we have. What does it mean to be ourselves when we play? You know, I used to teach a lot of young children how to play piano. Like I 30 students at, at a local school at one point, all the way from like ages six, five and six, all the way up to teenagers. And um, I'll tell you, the first time the young kids play piano, whether it's a written piece or improvisation, they have their own individuality because they have no um, previous training. They just sit down and they play it and it's all a little different. You know, they're either more energetic or they have a certain touch, right? Everybody has a touch. They have their own touch. And then that gets glossed over with, oh, play play pretty, you know, play a legato sound. All that might be necessary, but how do you do it in a way that you retain your own individuality, just like a vocalist does? We all have our own speaking voice. You call a friend, you know, and the, now that everybody has caller ID, right? But, but in the old days, you could just call up, the phone rang, and you say, hey, how you doing? It's me. You don't have to say, who's me? It's your friend, you know, or a family member. I know how you sound. You know how I sound. Um, it's the same thing with our piano playing if, we explore that, and I think that's what Jarrett's pointing towards. And there's a lot of freedom. Most people, uh, most musicians, uh, develop their own individuality, improvising musicians, develop their own individuality by sort of limiting the stuff they play. Oh, I'm the kind of player who only plays cluster chords, you know? Or I'm the kind of player that, uh, um, uh, really swings. You know? And I think some of the really, really great musicians, Charlie Parker, Art Tatum, Duke Ellington, Keith Jarrett, Chick Corea, they don't live with themselves like that. They they're they they found who they are, they can express that, and then they can play anything. 
and it, uh, vastly different types of music, and it still sounds like them. So um, instead of a quick answer, a shortcut for this, which wouldn't go very far anyway, uh, let's take this as a chance to explore it for an hour a day, a lifetime, right? This is a lifetime, and I think Jarrett's pointing us towards that. So uh, thanks for joining me on this journey. Uh, love your comments. Thank you for um, uh, supporting this. You know, uh, also saying how much uh, Jarrett means to you, and if you'd like to comment on anything, leave a comment about your thoughts about this or another musician you like or something about Jarrett's, or support each other um, in your comments. That's uh, really what it's all about. So thanks for being here. See you in the next video.